the, the, the first one is related to the key differences from the classic uh, replication uh, process. Uh, as you may know, the, the classic replication process was using a, a, an ad hoc uh, uh, quorum algorithm that uh, was having a, a bit of uh, issue in case uh, we got a single pair. So just uh, a master and a slave. And in order to, to make it work for that case, uh, has been developed a, a separate feature called the network finger. Okay. And this uh, pluggable quorum vote uh, replication, as the name suggests, is not a new replication, uh, even if uh, in, the, in the final form could be very different from the classic one. Okay. But still, it tried to, 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 beef, uh, to, to both work uh, as the previous one with multi nodes. Uh, so no split brain and just the replication process that work and in the single pair scenario as well covering the bits that the the network finger was going to cover and adding some new feature because the network finger by its its own definition was using just a witness that look at the states of the other brokers okay while having a proper distributed consensus algorithm allows to have more nodes, okay, more external nodes to perform any decision about the nodes that are, the broker nodes that are connected, the single pair. And that is a bit helpful, not just with the simple network isolation, but proper network split, complete network split by using different networks. So that's as a general overview, let's move to the, to the part of the PR. I'm interested here to, to know how to move and in which direction to move. So uh, as I said, uh, this PR is going to fill some of the gap of the existing network uh, pinger behavior. Okay, In which part the network pinger and the, 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 the classic uh, uh, quorum uh, replication uh, um, how, how they behave in front of the same problem, okay? They, they don't act exactly the same. For example, the network pinger is a bit more resilient. So uh, if uh, in, in, the, in the classic uh, replication roles, we got a master and the master is getting isolated. So it's pinger can, the, the pinger can't reach, can't reach it. The, the J1 process, uh, is still up, but the broker is being uh, shut down. And uh, the, the, there is a process that uh, at interval try hard to, to reach again the pinger. And if uh, the, the broker is not isolated anymore, the broker is getting restarted again. Okay, And that's the, the, the way by which the, the pinger front uh, a case in which we are isolated. With the, the, the classic replication involving multiple brokers, the behavior was very different because if a, a live broker, a master, is getting a connection failure with its own backup and, uh, this, and the user has configured the, the option of a vote on a repli replication failure, there are no retries until the quorum is reachable again. It will just try once. And if the master fail to, to win the vote, to stay alive, is going to shut down itself, including the J1. Okay. So as we can say, even if this new pluggable quorum vote is going to mostly to, to work with multi nodes, it has to front it, which kind of, of the two behavior we should decide to, to apply here, okay? The, um, the community, in, a, in I mean, someone rightly raised the issue why we can make it like the pinger, okay? So similar to the pinger, we can retry again and again until uh, the, 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 the quorum is uh, reachable and we can perform a decision, okay? And it seems a good plan, but uh, we have an issue with that at the moment. 
and is more related uh, to journal misalignment than the actual split brain. Because uh, uh, let's think about this uh, scenario, for example. So we have uh, a single pair okay, with the uh, master and a slave. And uh, let's use the new term, but they are very similar. So a primary and a backup. And uh, a primary is getting rightly replicated uh, with, with a backup. So the backup is a, an in-sync replica. Okay, For whatever reason, we got a connection drop between the two. Because of this connection drop, uh, we can have the, 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 the master that should uh, shut down the replication channel with the backup. And the backup will try to become the next slide. Given that uh, is just a net simple glitch in the, in the connection between the two broker, the expectation is that uh, everything will work uh, correctly. So the, 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 the primary will try hard. Uh, no, will try, will just uh, retain its live role. And the backup uh, start uh, vote retries time to become the live for some time. OK, let's think that uh, we got a proper network, network split in this point. With a proper network split uh, that uh, take advantage to have the primary able to reach the majority of the node, the primary still retain its live role, while the backup is st still stuck, retrying again and again to, to, to become the live. Okay. And uh, no, no, pro probably I'm lost in, in the whole story. Let, let me retry. Yeah, I was about to ask, why would the slave? Because if you have a check, surely the slave would just shut down. Then, uh, I missed the part in which it shut down. It, it won't shut down. Well, yes. So why would it be trying to take leadership if it shuts itself down? Because it can't talk to ZK. Uh, if it can talk to ZK as it is now, as I use it, as I configure it now, I make it work similarly to the classic re replication. So in the classic replication, you continuously devote to retry in two cases. The one in which uh, someone is saying there is a live around, and in the case in which uh, the quorum is not reachable. In both cases, we vote to retry time. So I preserve just the original implementation. So unless uh, Quorum is reachable to give you a proper answer in which the live is not around, or the live is effectively still up, it will continue. So it shouldn't shut down itself. But in any way, the backup is pre pretty resilient. So if it fails uh, to acquire the live lock for voter retries time, it will become a backup awaiting someone to pair with with again because uh, as a backup uh, there is no there is no point to actually try to deactivate uh, is already deactivated because uh, if a backup can became alive there is no point to just you know block doing what you want to do and it was just to reach some live to pair with no So I'm getting quite confused here, Francesca. You're talking about what is today in the old world or what you want with ZK? Huh. OK, it's complex because uh, the, the feature itself, uh, or, or at least what I was aiming in the first place was just to replacing the quorum part with something that worked with single pair too. But uh, during this process, of replacing what we have, I found out that there are many states in, uh, in, the, in, in, in the interaction between uh, the live and the backup that can cause split brain or even worse, journal misalignment. So I try to cover all the state in a couple of state diagrams that I have attached to the drive. And I see the sum of this state has been correctly fixed 
with the new version. But still, we got the journal misalignment problem that can be caused in many different ways. And one of these ways is exactly when we retry to do something. It's not because of the retry, really. The problem is that uh, we don't uh, sequence the journal or we don't have a way to tell which one was the last broker with the most up-to-date journal. And given that we don't have that one yet, retrying can cause journal misalignment more quickly. You know, because uh, given that we always allow a broker to serve clients while he's alone, while he's not replicated, we always get the chance in which uh, that broker can die alone and another broker, because was retrying to acquire the live lock, is capable to acquire it without having the journal up to date. Because it was still in the process. You know, if it was, uh, there was a network partition, it means that uh, for sure it doesn't have the most up to date journal. But given that it cared just to acquire a live lock, it will be able, right? So, but, 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 but Francesco, wait a moment. But if you have all your cluster, yeah, talking with ZK, and if any of them can't talk to ZK, then they shut themselves down. The lock and... No, no. Right well, now, it's not what's going on. Well, right now, I make, I make it do it only if you are, have the live role. Because only if you have the live role, you really care. About but you also story. care about the slaves, because if you have a slave that's split brain, you just don't want it possibly getting into fear. Just shut it down until it can talk with ZK again. Then you don't get state issues where it could accidentally activate. Why? Right? It can only activate. So the way I say it is you can only start trying to get the lock if you can talk with ZK. If you can't talk with ZK, shut yourself down and keep trying to talk with ZK again. Yeah. If you can talk with ZK, you're now eligible to try and take that lock if you are in sync. Yeah, but That's the in sync part of the problem. So the problem is that how you know that you are completely in sync if you don't know what's happened on the other side. You just know what's happened on the deeper side. Well, if you can talk to the lock, either one broker's got the lock already and therefore you can't get the lock and therefore you know you're going to become a slave. Correct? Yeah, but you don't know what's happening in the middle. I mean, what do you mean? Just you know, about if someone's the got the lock, that means someone's got the lock in, in ZK. No, it means that the session is still alive. That's different. Okay, but still, you're, you're, no, you're no, in a case now where you're now going, well, who's got the lock? And go try to talk to him or her, sorry, being a bit. Um, but you should go talk to them. Now, if that's not contactable, there be obviously that lock's going to time out at some point, right? Mm. As in, if that other process truly has died whilst it had the lock in a distributed world, the distributed lock should release if it's not renewed, just like in a library. Exactly, exactly. Yeah? The session timeout for that one. Yeah. So at that point, someone else could. But if it hasn't replicated the data, it knows it shouldn't be able to take that lock until it's replicated the data in. So it shouldn't. It should know itself. Hey, I haven't managed to replicate my data from an existing master. Correct? Mm, yeah. It should know that I've not yet been able to talk to any master and replicate in the data. So it shouldn't. It shouldn't be trying to steal the lock until it's got its internal state acknowledge from the master that it's in sync so it should never be trying to get the lock until that event has happened correct yeah, that, uh, that's correct that's correct that's yeah that's right that's right so it's it's the it's the next so keep we have to keep going so at the next stage it's like it's when it's it, it's an instinct replica and it thinks it's it has the the best version of data it has the source of truth in its journal well as soon as it's in sync so once you're up once your slave is in sync yeah it should know it's in sync right they yeah. should yeah so once you're in sync you are technically you can now go and come into the, can i still the lock can i still the lock can i still the lock and obviously the system that's got the lock will go sorry no but i'm still renewing my library book at the moment yeah 
and therefore it can't take the lock. Now, if that master goes down, well, hey, it was in sync. It's, it's allowed to be going and steal that lock. So, and, and that's, so there's a little, that, that's true if it does it immediately. So if there's any delay, this is where we have a problem. Yeah. In a delay between what, sorry? So, so, it, so the backup is in sync. He's a, we call him an in sync yep. replica. And he's trying to get the lock, trying to get the lock. Yep. And if he, if, he, if he doesn't get the lock, so, he's, so how long does he wait? Say, say a day. Uh, he constantly is trying to get that lock. Right. So he's racing to try and get the lock with, with potentially, we say, if, if it, he's the only person trying to get that lock. We're no, okay. You could have multiple slaves trying to get that lock. Well, and you could also have the primary restart. No, you can't the primary is allowed to renew the lock. That's different than taking the lock. You can't have a multiple slave trying to well, it because you can have only one slave in sync with you. Okay. Oh, it doesn't matter how many slaves. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. One or many. Well, but today you currently only have one. Right? Today you only have one, and I think today yeah. you only have one. And I think the master, or so the, we call them the primary, the primary exits. And the and the the intent is that the backup, who is an insect replica, takes over. So the pri and so and it and it's the only person that can take over because it's the only insect replica, and it doesn't really compete with anyone because the primary won't restart. It's 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 committed suicide. It's died, and it's saying I'm I want the backup to take over. Yeah, and and that works fine. That where you have a problem is if the primary restarts. Well, if the primary restarts. Yeah, it should okay. start up. And it tries to get the lock, and now we have a race. Exactly. No, you don't. Well, we do have a race, so one of them is going to get the lock. Yes, one of them will get the lock. And the primary will say, well, I'm still the primary. And the backup will think, well, I'm still trying to get the lock. Yeah, but there's been no state change now. Well, this is, yeah, that's the because, problem. Because none of the ports have come up, so no one's been able to consume or acknowledge or produce any more messages because your brokers have, no one's brought their ports up. No, yeah, and somebody is going to bring their ports up. Presumably the primary brings up the ports. Well, whoever takes the lock brings up their port. Yeah. So if it's you the bring up the port until you got lock. Yes, exactly right. So now, but so, so because the primary starts accepting connections and accepts data, Implicit in that is that the backups replica is no longer in sync. Yeah, journal are diverged. Yeah, and and the thing is, we need a way of recognizing that because if if the if the but then you can get lock you can just get a lock change notification. So yeah, if, or you, or if the lock was taken, so yeah, but if you don't get it, is the problem. So the problem is if, if you're depending on a lock change notification, but you don't get it, and the primary accepts a message in the meantime, you're goosed. Yeah, but, but if you're the slave, right? Yeah, you're the instant in, replica. Yeah, you're the slave. Yeah. That'd be, you would have had a connection break with the master if it truly went down anyway. You would. Yeah, so as a slave, you notice that and you know, therefore I'm no longer in sync because I've had a disconnect from master. It's not enough. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you cannot differentiate that from that disconnect from the master, yeah, it means you like that happened when this when the primary dies as well. Yes. You know, and that's in that primary death case, you want the backup to be saying, okay, I'm gonna take over. Yes. Because the primary stays dead. So in that case, you want the backup to, to resume. Yeah, and the backup would steal the lock, wouldn't he? Well, yeah, he would be able to get the lock legitimately. It wouldn't be a steal, it'd be like okay, would the lock would expire and zookeeper, then the backup would get it. Mm -hmm. And that, that would work fine so long as that primary stays away. I mean, the, the crux of the problem is the primary dying, the backup being an instinct replica, the primary coming back and up again, doing more data and dying again, and then the backup still thinking it's an instinct replica. Exactly. And that, that is our problem because our, our journals, we cannot replicate that. We cannot. Sorry, can you repeat that last one you just said? Sorry, Gary. Okay. So the, so the, it's the, the primary and the instinct replica. Yeah. And then the primary dies. The primary um, dies. The so primary whoever was dies. leader, yeah. And then the, the real problem is if the primary restarts and gets the lock before the insect replica and then dies again. And some clients. Uh, and some clients in the meantime, it accepts some messages. 
So it, it's it's now the the in sync backup is it in, it was in a state where it was in sync and it's transitioned to a state where it's out of sync but it doesn't really know it has no way of knowing unless we put some epoch or something in the lock and we put it also in our journal. As a general kind of failure, we have found out that the problem seems to arise when we left the broker being able to sell the client without being replicated and then crash. Yeah. And in that moment, there is anyone because of its role is trying to become live and it's a seed. But why, but why did the primary come up? Wait, wait, wait. Why did the prime? So, if, if we take away the whole idea of primary, you know, so yeah. I'm going to be really sorry. I know this is not. Can I just call it master slave? Because in my yeah. head, that's how I. Uh, really sorry. So, so we have a currently a master slave with full back to master scenario. Yeah. If we took that away and said actually anybody could be master, then when the when whoever used to be master comes up. Well, he should know he doesn't, he's not in sync actually, because he he wasn't. And then your only issue now is, well, what happens if you have complete cluster outage? Because if, if all nodes are equal on startup, then if you can only take the lock, if you know that you were in sync at some, you were in sync, then if the one that was mastered at the time or primary or, you know, active, went down and comes up well he went down he came up but hey he knows he he needs to sync from whoever's primary at the moment right in the cluster and if no one's primary then whoever was in sync can go take that lock and there's no race about that and then we don't get into the journal issue and then all we have to do is what happens in complete cluster outage yeah i don't i don't i'm not following there because i i like I, so I th there's there's one there's one thing I think we can do, is that we can have an option on a for, on a master primary that says if you're out of sync you die, and that helps a lot in that that means we'll, 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 we'll get rid of the idea of, of primary slaves masters and the rest of it. All nodes are equal. Yeah. When you come up, you assume you have no data. Whatever data you've got on disk is is dead. Yeah. Now, when you come up, you try and get the you you, tr you you come up and say, okay, well, who else is there? Now, if you had a slave who currently was in sync, he can go get that lock and become active, right? Now, if that master comes up, well, he well the old node because let's stop using the word master because we've just said we're getting rid of master slave entirely. Do concept? He comes up, he's got no journal, he needs to replicate from somewhere. Therefore, he's never he's not going to be in the state to be trying to get that lock. Okay, but at what point? At what point did that? So, so we we have node that comes alive, owns the journal, yep, and dies, right? And then the lock dies with them. So that that node at some. And now point, you're in a case where you've had multiple failures. You've had you've had yes you've had a you've had a second failure you've had. Uh, but, but and in the time of a second failure, the other one hasn't come back active. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I, I, that that's the crux of it. The crux of it is. Is you've yeah you've you've switched you've switched so someone has ownership of the journal, they they have they get the lock they get ownership of the journal they start using the journal, yeah and then, and then they die. And have I got enough? And have I got so if I have say six nodes? So imagine I've got six nodes running. Is another node able to take over or not in your in your? So so in in that so so the, in the the simple one node. Another node can only take over once it has, has replicated the data. Yeah. So what, once it replicates the data, now we have two nodes that are viable candidates to own the journal. And, I, and we can work happily like that, and we can connect to one of those nodes, it can replicate to the other one, and all is good. And we have two copies of our data. Mm -hmm. And then if the two die... At, that, at the same time. If the two die at the same point... Roughly, yeah. And the two start up again, in theory, both of them are good candidates for for taking over because they're both of the journals are the same, and nothing else has happened. So either of them could take over and own the journal, and we could continue. And I think that's we are. Are we okay with that? Well, that's where you'd probably not on the lock itself, but you know, ZK is a, as um, 
you know, you can just use yeah. it as a key value map, right? You could almost store in there. This was the last known master, right? And only the last no, ma known master. So when you come up, they don't use their internal state by default. If they come up and the timeout occurs, they can go, well, was I the last known master then, actually? Yeah, if you can become la last known master, then you can activate. Now you've got a problem of what happens if you have double failure and that last known master is the thing that is irrecoverable. Then unfortunately, there is going to be a point where you just have to go, look, you need some toggle on the command line and, and bring it up. But you want to try and make that really hard to get to or kind of only on very first cluster initialization. Yeah, I mean, and that's I think and that's the point we're making is that we are adding a quorum vote to an existing system and the existing system doesn't have that, we, we don't have that bit of shared state in a, in a, in a coordination service like Z Z uh, Zookeeper. We don't have it at the minute. No, but we're implementing something new here, right? We are implementing something new and we need to add that little bit, I think. And if we add that little bit to Zookeeper, that little bit of shared state that, that basically enforces the order in which we, we exactly. transfer ownership of the journal, then we can, we have something that we can work with, I think. Do you need to know the complete order or do you just need to know last master? Oh, sorry, we last lead. We can have the complete as well, but uh, if that is, uh, we, we, we need to care for design. For example, if uh, we are choosing to sequence the journal in a way that each time there is any important events, we update the, the local journal uh, sequence epoch and the remote one on Zookeeper while holding the live lock, if uh, hopefully <laughs> we are really old in that moment, the, the lock, but that's another problem. We are able to, to have uh, an always incremented epoch that could be checked in order to understand if the journal we got is the most up-to-date one. But uh, we need to mark it for each important event, including a primary that uh, lost the connection with the backup and start to serve alone the other clients. If we mark the, the, the journal as aged in that moment, we will save this one to happen. So no one is going to believe that could be the next one because we are marking that the journal is not the same. Okay. And that could be helpful. I, I, I would I would be very cautious about storing state both in the journal and in my quorum management, as in my control plane. I would I would not do that. I'd leave data plane and I'd have control plane. Control plane is in charge of knowing who is master, who was master, things like that. Journal, I'd leave my data plane as dumb as possible because if we start having it in both places, we mix up, you know. I ownership understand. and ideas but also you end up with multiple states everywhere and reconciliation problems so yeah. if i was going to have who's master who was the last live all of that i'd stick all of that in the zookeeper and make it my control plane entirely yeah. i wouldn't try and have anything inside those journals it's just a data plane thing now the only, the only thing is you do you can't get away from it read well it, i think it, if we eliminate this, that notion that a, a primary, you see, the, uh, the, the crux of our problem is this, just running with two nodes, running with just a live and a backup as, as a single pair. That is, that's, and then because you have a single pair and you lose one, you want the other one to run unreplicated. That introduces a, a fundamental problem. Why? Because you've got a pair who are working together and now they're going to, one of them is making a unilateral decision to be but he doesn't have to. The control plane's making that decision for you. Zookeeper. Zookeeper. You're, you're just a client of Zookeeper going. Yes, you're just a client of Zookeeper, but unless you can have some way of reconciling the state transitions in Zookeeper with your, your journal state, you really are still working on your own. You know, your, your updates in, the, in your journal are yours and yours alone. So you, so that's the only bit of state you have. But what updates are you having in your journal until you take that lock? So nothing until you take the lock. But the point is, when you take that lock, you do have to, you have to in some way know about the sequence, the order in which that lock has been taken. You need to know that this is lock number one. 
And the next time the lock is taken, it'll be knock number two. So any, any of my journal updates were, were applied under lock number one. And then I, I'm happy to know that if, if I get the lock and it's lock number two, well, my journal is, is, is the most up-to-date one. Uh, but if I don't, if, I, if I'm happy to get the lock, and the lock is number 10, and my last journal entry was lock one, the chances of my, my journal being the most up-to-date journal are very slim. So you're just doing it as a check? You're, you're doing it as a check, yeah. You're doing it as a, a verification to know that the transition I'm making, and it's more relevant to the backup that's an in-sync replica. He's an in-sync replica of the journal with lock number one. Mm -hmm. and, and then, so if he, if he gets the lock and it's lock number two, you know your in-sync replica is still valid. If you get the lock and it's lock number three, your in-sync replica is stale. Yeah. Because something else has had the lock in, in between. And then all we need is a command line for an override in a, in a disaster yeah. case. Yeah, exactly. Which you just say ignore the lock check or something. Exactly, or set it to zero or something, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. But I think so we need that, that little bit we're missing. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And, and we're not far from having that because like all of the, well, the Zookeeper lock internals, they're all based on a session and an epoch and a exactly. pretty much you get some of that for free, I think, if you just look at the internals of a lock in Zookeeper. Or you could just use, it, yeah, or can have a distributed uh, integer yeah. Yeah. Or, or long or whatever. Yeah. But I, I hear you in that you don't want, yeah, because you need, you need those updates to be atomic. So you want lock acquisition and epoch increment to be one thing. We want that all to happen, you know, as part of getting the lock on Zookeeper. Yes. And then you go back to your journal. Now I've opened my journal and I see, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm still in the same epoch. I'm in the next one. Things are good. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And uh, re returning back to the, I mean, I see a couple of good things that are coming out. For example, the one that, that uh, say, okay, let's drop uh, the existing role model. I would say. First, uh, to get uh, both and make available the option to have uh, even just multi-primary. Because uh, in, uh, what, what I change, uh, and then drop the backup if we see that there is no point to use it. Because the original motivation of this uh, PR was to satisfy everyone that uh, typically won't work. But we try hard to do it, at least make it right. So we still have... Uh, a role-based model, but we would like to have a multi-primary to work fine. In order to work fine, I need the CLI commands in order to set the node ID of someone. Because uh, the, right now, if uh, we have two primary, I, I haven't tested it, so don't, don't take it as a promise, but uh, the state diagram showed that it, it should work, considering this journal misalignment issue. If you got two broker, that both start with the same node ID because they will compete with each other and then we'll try to connect to each other in order to become, become the backup of the other, right? So the, the, the state the diagram works for it, but uh, I'm not that trusty to say that uh, it should be the only option right now for users. So let's think about this uh, when we got the epoch or the sequence, something to pro protect the journal misalignment to happen again in the mix before introducing something like just multi-primary. If we got both, probably it's fine, okay? Because, uh, you know, the primary by definition try hard to become live at any cost, while the backup try to help someone other. That's the, the, the typical idea of having two roles. And you can have a backup that give back its live role to the other side or right. something that just retain it. But it's very different from a primary. In this, uh, I, I, I think that's just over complicating things, to be honest. To have uh, the multi primary and uh, the primary in backup. No, no, but, but, but you basically, if you go to, to Gary's suggestion, right, you come up, yeah, first of all, you say, does anyone have, when you come up, if someone's got the lock, you know you're not going to take the lock. Simple as, someone else has got it. Go, go, go talk to them, because obviously they might be master. If not, after a timeout, then we can start going into, you know, what Gary was saying about, well, now I can go, well, I've got my, my uh, you know, journal ID that's been stored in the lock. Maybe I could go check it and see if I'm allowed to try and take that lock myself, because actually my journal is good. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. 
But if it just comes up and tries to take it, then we don't need to to have the whole concept of master slave, you know, fall back, fall over. It's a much simpler. I'm leader, your follower, and you can have multiple followers that are just constantly being kept in sync. Yes, but it means that as a follower, which journal are you trying to check in order to know if you can become someone? If you don't have any node ID and you generate one random like you, Well, you're not. You're just following. So in a healthy scenario, you're just following the mark, whoever's the leader right now. Now, it's a general concept of unnamed anonymous leader. And that, I mean, if we don't name someone, we don't know which locks we are going to expect. If we are thinking about to lo lock, why do you care? It's the same, right? Why do you care? If your journal ID, as Gary was suggesting, and we keep the number, an incremental number, inside the ZK, as long as your ID, you know, you just care about a global correct journal ID number. You don't care who it was, you just care about you have the right number. I, it looks to me a completely process, completely different process. It, it, is, it is completely different. I mean, that is, that's completely different to what's there now, but I, I, it's still an awful lot simpler. So I, and it's even an awful lot easier to reason about. But I think so. It's it's. I think we could probably go there, or or be able to configure the existing stuff such that it looks like that. That there's just multiple primaries and multiple backups. But it's yeah. Remember, yeah. For, for for me, the simpler we make it, the less to go wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the journal ID, in order to be incremented, there should be a number, and how you know that the one that you start first is just an unnamed one or anonymous one or just zero because it's never been said. Because like Gary said, you're storing that ID with your journal. But yeah, so I think there's also a separation between the node identity and the journal identity and then mm -hmm. the, the, ver the epoch or the version within that. You know, there, there's, there, there's two, two different things going on there. There's, there's a journal and a journal identity and then there's brokers that own it and and so the brokers that own it can be distinct from the identity of the journal exactly yeah. and even a reaching other one to pair with uh, is a, a very different process from just the topology that we are currently sharing you know if we still want to use the cluster connection to share topology in the form in which it is because uh, we, with the topology we, we, we know we have the node ID as the notion of the pair, the name it pair, that could not have any backup in. And that's the current way by which we address the pair, right? And we should change it in order to know which one to reach and try to pair with. Thank you, that's uh, too much detail, France, <laughs> for me. I don't know. Current, currently, the, the, the way by which we, we identify each broker is based on not the idea, right? No, it's wrong. It's not just the broker. The node ID is a primary with an identity, while backup is anonymous, doesn't have any node ID. The way by which we search which node to pair with is by reaching it and try to set us as a backup in a, this pair identified by the node ID of the live we are pairing with, right? If uh, in this new process we're gonna reach someone in order to decide to become uh, it, its its backup, how is it supposed to happen? In which way we we choose which one is the right one? Do you care? You just have a number of candidate processes that could. And, and that means that even the, the discovery, the static configuration is going to... I know, I'm just trying to fit it with what we have now, really. Probably it's my fault. Because, uh, as I said, there is a pluggable version of what we have. But if we are talking about a very different uh, mechanism, I should try first to understand uh, how it works with the rest of the infrastructure. Or I should imagine what the new infrastructure should look like first. Because I, I don't... I'm not able to see the whole process, uh, really. 
So I can give you an example. If uh, we really want a multi-primary, I want Tvergo to use Zookeeper. Really, I will just let any raft like to just perform leadership election, really real leadership election and manage the replication of the journal. And we won't ever have any possible disalignment with the journal because only the leader is the one allowed to write the journal, right? So it makes things, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. If we are going to reinvent the wheel, it should be much better than what we have now, right? And in that case, a rough is the way to go, not the keeper. If we are still want, uh, wanting to use what we have now, maybe we can go in the direction of multi-primary, but I, I won't change everything. I don't know. I don't think you need, we're not saying you need multiple primaries. I yeah. say that it's possible. I don't know if uh, it's... Uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's but, yeah. Well, so, so, yeah, I, Franzo, I mean, what you're saying there is, is we could fix the journal and we could replicate the journal properly. Uh, and, and we could use Raft. And, but I, and we might find that that's, that's, we need to do that, but I... At the minute, we're not there. At the minute, we have journals that are replicated, and then the journals aren't ordered. So the, yeah, you get two different. You get the same data in two different journals in different orders. So we cannot, we cannot reconcile them. So they're they're effectively copies of data that are unrelated. Yeah. And uh, the reason why the the replication as it is now has been used by some customer is because uh, it's pretty per performant. Why? Because we always perform a single op sending to a backup. If we start to use something more consistent, that we have enough insurance that it works fine, like Raft. If we got three nodes, you won't have just two op. You would have many ops, you know? Yeah. And it means that a witness still perform a lot of journal activity without being a broker. So he can't uh, become a leader. In a, in the rough sense, because it, it will maybe it will remain alone. You know, it's something that should be really rethink as a whole process. But but it's a big it's a bigger job, and it's I think it's something for the future as opposed to just improving the current setup we have and trying to get trying to make a forward step that we can avoid successfully avoid having uh, two multiple owners of that journal at any given time. And that's, I think that's, that's our first protocol. Yeah, I mean, if we think of what we have now and which issues it has from the point of view of users, right? Uh, first, we have a problem of, of correctness. So multi-live shouldn't happen. Sure. So big brain free from that point of view. Second problem is journal misalignment, the, the one that we have spoken about. Yeah. And third one is the model is too complex. And that this uh, model is too complex. Uh, it's pretty personal, you know. It's something that we really need to understand what to deprecate, what to simplify, which states should be dropped. Okay. And I think that is a process that uh, starting from an existing infrastructure should be made, you know, at steps. So let's start first to make it pluggable and make it right. So not having weird state of the broker as we have now. Later, we can move uh, and having the journal uh, time stamping, okay, with the or whatever mechanism right. to prevent the journal misalignment to happen. And then, given that we have a complete state diagram that we know, we understand the people will use it, then we can make it simpler and simpler. Because yeah. we are not doing from scratch as it is, we have already a, a use case, and I was trying to cover that one or both. Want. So single pair, multi, multi pairs. But that, that's just the way by which I thought about this child. You know? It doesn't mean that we can't do in the right direction. We are in the right direction. We just need to go step by step. Yeah. I think you're making great progress. I think it's forward progress. And I think you, know, you identified three problems. And the first two are must have. We've got to sort them out. So the correctness and the misalignment, 
we've got to avoid them. So I, I like, uh, and I think we're we're close to sorting those two. And then the the third one is okay. We can do that next sort of thing because we can try and make it simpler. Um, I mean, you, you can try and have a pair of brokers that trade off availability for consistency, and then you produce another pair of brokers if you want to get high availability. But you're and that's that's reasonable. And we just don't have an easy way to do that today. We 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 should have the the primary decide I'm no longer replicated I'm dying and then expect the other pair to take over or the backup to take over you know it's so I, I we just need to be able to to do that I think uh, and we'd be close to being able to do that I think uh, is valuing that yeah I think I think Gary you put that comment on the PR and that was one of the things that um, I thought was kind of super important was that idea of um, if you're doing sync and you're dropping availability to have a solution not to be completely unavailable. So like you just suggested, have a second pair to provide clients somewhere to go if you're not gonna resolve it in your, your, your first two pair. Because I think, I think that's a problem with a lot of these cluster solutions is availability. When availability goes to zero, you've kind of killed your benefit as an event messaging platform because you you got to think of this more like, that. In my thought, you got to think of like a network, like you can't, you, being zero online is a, is a yeah. so, so the potential value value in that. And it's really easy to reason about. It's very simple. Two pairs, and you can understand one of them is either the backup is alive or the you know both are alive. And the same for your other pair. Any other points? And I think that helps. I think that helps with the recovery too, because if you look at the, if you look at the, the, you know, when organizations are having to manage and build this out, a lot of this is going very playbook. Organizations are having turnover their team size, you know, three six month intervals. They're getting turnover of the people they're managing this. So anything that requires, you know, deep understanding to make it work, I think is going to have a hard time with adoption and, and ultimately be, be successful. I think that's huge. Okay, so ah, we raised a lot of points here, but uh, still, we are in in a community. I don't know. I, I know that most of the things thanks to work by vote, and, and I don't know if I can issue any vote. Uh, I just want to have opinion, and that we can work together in order to move yeah. the direction here. But, uh, but you've mentioned of the three things you've mentioned, two of them are a, are a must-have. Critical. So, so like correctness and and then avoiding the misalignment. So yeah. we can't yeah. argue. I mean, the simplification is another good thing because uh, uh, the one that has written the whole state, state diagram, I can tell you, yes, it's not easy. I mean, it's not simple in any way. So. Yes, I understand it. Could be simplified by eliminating the weird states at the moment. And that's already a, a good step forward. Unless, as I said, we do it really from scratch. But it means uh, thinking about uh, who charge the users for these new features. Because maximum consistencies, it's very likely performance sucks. So it's very important to, to really Yeah, I don't think we want to make it that it's a complete start from scratch because if you think about it, you're already dealing with people trying to migrate from Active 5 to Artemis. That's That's been a big headache. I've been involved with four migrations now and uh, each one is new bugs and that's been a challenge. So I definitely think we want to make sure that, you know, if you move from a cluster, you've already got a cluster, now you want to move over to ZK setup. It, sh it should be an easy transition where, you know, they can take an existing cluster, fair enough, take an outage, as in shut it all down, reconfigure and, and you, you know, bring it back up and then use ZK. I don't think we'd want to be making it, but they they have to spin up new clusters again and have, you know, bridges and all, you know, big migration challenge. I think it wants to definitely, whatever we do needs to be um, in-place upgrade, a bit, you know, an ability to do an in-place upgrade. 
for okay. me that would be paramount to, to a good adoption if we make it that you have to stand up a brand new cluster bridge and move workloads it's going to have a very hard um adoption rate i think that's one of the biggest things from active mq5 to artemis has been the adoption rate right because the config was different it's like you know that's the biggest problem you almost have to run clusters side by side and and uh, it's you know I'm I'm currently on one at the moment. We've got an active MQ5. We're moving over to to Artemis, and it's it's taken a year and a half, and we're we're ninety percent of the way there now. Um, but it's a big investment for a company. Yeah, it is. And uh, you know uh, when I try to when I start work on this uh, on this gyra, I try hard to deliver at least two different version, in which one of the two was well not much known to user, but try hard to have a self-contained solution in, in which the broker doesn't need anything more than the broker itself. You know that uh, I I failed because uh, the community of Atomics uh, is barely alive. And uh, I decided to just stick with the only solution based on Zookeeper. But uh, a fourth point uh, I was thinking about in order to easy it, life of the user could be to embed zookeeper in in the broker nodes is not a must have it shouldn't be the default but could be easier for some user because uh, they were used to have mostly the broker to care about obviously in order to get a node number of nodes you still need the kind of weakness somewhere an external zookeeper that could be in the form of the console commands of the broker, you know. But it's already a, a good step in the right direction in which the people were used to care just about the broker and they should care about just the broker in order to make it work. And I'm saying it without any company hat because, uh, as you know, it's much easier for me to think that uh, it's the user that should care about the keeper. But I understand that things should be made simpler for migration. So I, I would prepare four follow-up, three follow-up separate the gyros after this discussion in order to tackle each one uh, of the issues we have spoken about. And we, we can think how to deliver and uh, if delivering, uh, if delivering for sure, but uh, that's, we, we need the plan, you know, in order to make things to work. And uh, I would like to move on with the, the one that I already implemented by adding more you know, more logging, make it more easier to reason about, probably dropping where the state. And uh, the, the most relevant change, if compared with the original, the classic replication that they made, is that now the primary, the master, never forget its node ID. It seems stupid, probably is a bug of the classic replication, but uh, in the classic replication, during a fail back, if uh, you got any problem, the master uh, delete all its data journal and lose its identity. Okay, that's not right. It's a, a kind of split brain because uh, the people uh, say, okay, uh, it's shut down and has removed the node ID. Let's restart it again. And when you start it again, given that has a different node ID, it's spawn up, <laughs> split brain. Clients find, find it out and they say, okay, I can connect to it because it's a lie. And it's bad, obviously. This one has been sold in this new implementation. So it's not exactly the same as before. Should be better in, the, in, the, in some regard. But obviously, journal misalignment is key in order to make it right. And we'll probably produce a document with some of the suggestions about uh, how to handle the the, the the journal sequencing right because uh, it add new states to, to the to the old system okay so we we got that cloud of information by which we can check if we are in charge not just because there is no live around but because we have the right data okay for my point of view it's done unless anyone have any question or any suggestion and i can move on
No, I, I'm personally got no more apart from kudos to you, really, Francesco, with uh, running with this. I think it's a significant, going to be a significant improvement. And I think Gary's idea about having a journal ID is a fantastic solution to the problem that we had. It is. It is. And that is the, the beauty of the community. So we are all brain and we try hard to make it work in a, in a non-distributed way. We got always consensus thanks to the community call, right? Okay. Folks, I, I am going to share the, the, hopefully if I get enough space on my drive, the, the recordings of uh, this call. But still, I, I will open uh, some relevant gyra in order to track what we have said. Okay. See you. And uh, thanks again.